has it delivered this budget, a budget for tough times? Well, one organisation that keeps a very close eye on your taxpayers' dollar is the Taxpayers' Union. And Connor Malloy, campaign manager from the Taxpayers' Union, joins us now. Connor, how are you? Oh, I've been better, Sean. Uh, after seeing yesterday's budget, uh, I would say the, the mood was pretty sombre in the office yesterday. What? Now why? Why? Well, we, we laid out key three tests uh, for the budget. Uh, first one are around tax. Uh, Nicola Willis and Chris Luxon harped on about the fact that it had been 14 years since New Zealanders had had uh, tax relief. During that time, uh, stealth tax hikes for the average earner had amounted to uh, $49 additional a week yeah uh uh so we didn't get that in terms of spending uh nicola willis is spending more than grant robertson uh in comparison to what he spent last year but also in comparison to his pre-covid uh well-being budget uh the government was elected uh all three parties promised to cut spending but they're spending more and then obviously the last one is the debt uh we're borrowing more and more uh the debt clock is ticking up higher and higher and we're not forecast uh, to get a surplus until uh, 2028, and that is, uh, you know, relying on some very bold assumptions. Yeah, that's that's it. And the debt thing is the one that sticks out for me. National sell themselves, and the coalition sells itself as the better economic manager. I just can't see how you can sort of wipe off that 23 billion in savings over four years by taking out another 12 billion dollars of borrowing i know it's not a straight dollar for dollar if you like uh, comparison because debt is just the cost of servicing it um it but what choice did nicola willis have connor look the the government uh increased spending by 84 percent under grant robertson uh there was there was plenty of fat to be trimmed there um you know just looking at a few obvious areas that i would have thought would have been First on the chopping block for savings, uh, film and gaming subsidies uh, continuing, uh, fees-free university, uh, that, you know, that's middle-class welfare, that should have been on the chop. Uh, and the 18,000 additional bureaucrats in Wellington, uh, they're proposing you know, to cut around a quarter of those. So you know, there's plenty of fat that should have been trimmed. Uh, I think taxpayers you know, elected uh, this government to do a lot more they wanted them to do a lot more, and unfortunately, they've been shortchanged. All right. Uh, Connor, fees-free, though, my understanding is they're going to make the fees-free year the last year of your study, not the first year, which encourages people to stick around to get the uh, to get the benefit. That's a smart move, surely. Well, it's certainly better than the system we had before, um, but we shouldn't really have fees-free at all. It doesn't make sense for, you know, working New Zealanders who, you know, probably never had the ability to go to university uh, to then be subsidising people that will end up earning more than them over the course of their lives. Uh, we've already got a very generous student loans uh, scheme that's interest-free yeah. uh, that that anyone can access. It doesn't make sense to subsidise that even further. Yeah. All right, I want to come back to something you mentioned. You know, 14 years since the last tax cut for New Zealanders. Um, and you're saying that, has caused what an additional forty nine dollars? Is it a week or a fortnight for every taxpayer? A, a week. For a the week. Worker, yeah. so, okay, a week. So that's basically a hundred bucks a fortnight that we've sort of lost out in over the last fourteen years. Well, geez, you've got to be in exactly the right sort of um, domestic arrangement, income arrangement to get that back with these tax cuts, isn't it? So I don't really make. I was going woohoo! I'm getting twenty bucks extra a week. That doesn't pay me back the hundred bucks a fortnight that I was losing, does it? No, well, it's a it's a sleight of hand because none of these these tax hikes over the last fourteen years were announced or campaigned on or, or passed through parliament. It's when inflation uh, pushes people's incomes into higher tax brackets, and even though that they, even though they can't, they're not actually uh, have more purchasing power. Uh, they're being taxed more, uh, and the funny thing is, is that despite criticising it. Nicola Willis is relying on that very same stealth tax to get back into surplus. She plans to claw back uh, an additional, I think it's $3.8 billion uh, through this uh, stealth tax and inflation uh, in order to get back into surplus uh, by 2028. You know, she's, uh, her and Christopher Luxon have said that it's lazy not to uh, adjust tax brackets, uh, but then they're relying on that very same mischief themselves. All right. Could this have been worse? 
Oh, certainly. I mean, we're, a, we're a tax bad group. The budget can always be worse with us spending more or borrowing more. Um, they certainly did uh, find some savings in certain areas, uh, nowhere near as far as we'd want to go, but uh, credits where it's due, they've cut out almost half a billion dollars from MB, um, which was you know, probably one of the most bloated organisations. Uh, I think Nicola Willis credited David Seymour for finding a lot of that. Um, so, you know, credit where it's due. Uh, I'm sure Nicola Willis will be happy that she's delivered, uh, you know, the the tax relief that she campaigned on at the election. Uh, but frankly, you know, when you're spending more and borrowing more, uh, it doesn't do much, much. Yeah, that doesn't in, sound like balancing the book, more. books to me. Colin, uh, before we go, just one other thing. Part of our tax dollar, of course, goes to fund Parliament and the MPs in the Maori Party, who would it seem to me have completely breached their oath of allegiance yesterday by declaring their political independence and that they're setting up a new new parliament. Is the taxpayers' union happy that they still sit in the House and get paid for sitting in the House, even though they've breached that oath of allegiance? Well, look, I'll, I'll leave it with you, Sean. I've been uh, head deep in, in uh, the budget document. You guys might want to have a look at uh, it. it. It, just suggest ever since I finished it yesterday, um, but I but I will just say, look, if if uh, Te Pāti Māori are looking at starting a new parliament, uh, you know we'll, we'll be on the lookout for a, a Māori taxpayers union. <laughs> well said, Connor. I thank you for your time, Connor Malloy, campaign manager at the taxpayers union. Not exactly cock a hoop, was he?